माता जी गुड मॉर्निंग ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स एस बो डाउन टू श्री माता जी रेज अवर मदर कुंडलिनी एंड पुट बंधन गणेश मंत्र साक्षा 
साक्षात श्री आदिशक्ति माता जी श्री Let's bring our attention on our Sahasara. Mataji, kindly remove all the thoughts from past and future and put attention into the present. I forgive all my thoughts. Now let us listen to Shimata Ji's speech. We understand that first one is not to harm anyone, ahinsa, not to kill anyone. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't eat meat and fish and all that. That's all nonsense. Of course, I mean, you should not hanker after food. No doubt about it. You don't kill anyone. Means you do not kill a human being. Thou shalt not kill. Just move forward so that they can sit there. Little. Come forward. I think best thing is to come very forward. So first thing is not to harm anyone. Second is to know that you have found the truth and give the testimony of the truth. Third is the detachment, the way I have told you about detachment. Not to get attached to any one person because he is a relation or something. But develop a universal feeling. And also not to hate anyone. That is even worse. That's a kind of a worse type of attachment. This word should go away from the mouth of all the Sahaja Yogis. I hate. It's called as a dandak. is the statute. You cannot hate anyone. Even Rakshasas, better not hate, hate them. Give them a chance.
Now the fourth thing, the fourth statute of the Lord is to lead a moral life. These statutes were given by all the gurus. Take them from Socrates onward, Moses, Abraham, Dattatreya, Janaka, up to say Nanaka, Muhammad Sahib, and take up to the point where it was only about a hundred years back, you can say at the most, was Saina. All of them have said that you have to lead a moral life. None of them have said that you do not get oh, many things were done. In the beginning of the society, to establish your relationship. There are laws which act. As there are laws of chemical laws are there, there are physical laws are there. In physics and chemistry, read, there are human laws which one should understand. The relationship between each other, the sublimity of their relationship, the purity of their relationship must be understood. And then only you can have a very, very happy married life, which is the basis. Thou shalt not commit adultery. But Christ has said, perhaps he knew the modern people as they would be using their brain for this. He said, thou shalt not have adulterous eyes. What a vision in those days to think. I mean, even I could not understand it when I was here. After only coming here, I could see that what it means. It's a possession on the eye. Possession. It's a joyless, useless. Behavior. It's time. Attention is fitted completely. There's no dignity. I should be steady. When you look at somebody steadily, you should know that you have got to be clear with respect. Not staring at people and just playing into the hands of the nation. The whole society is possessed. All the satanic forces have been let loose, I think. And the way people are possessed, they cannot see through these things. They are supposed to be Christians. Attention is to be looked up. That's the most important thing because attention is the one which is going to be enlightened. So, we have to know what morality is. Let people laugh at it. Let them say that these are goody goodies or this sort of thing. We are, we are proud. We are not ashamed of being righteous. This is a very important part of righteousness. Those who do not follow this will lose their vibration. Then, for a guru, he should not accumulate things. He should not have possession. 
If he has possession, they should be just for him. A guru must give away his possession. He should not have stamp collection. And all kinds of collections that he can get. Whatever things are useful, things to do. Which give happiness and joy to others, to their eyes. First thing, first thing. Such things which is a symbol to his life. Very symbolic. He should have. You suggest that he is a dharmic. He should not have things which are symbolic of all dharmic, of a religious life. Everything that he has, or he wears, or he shows, should be representative of his dharma. I don't know, but I don't know what was the situation here. But in India, when we were young, we were not allowed to listen to all kinds of music. Not allowed. Just not allowed. Not to see all kinds of filthy things and filthy documentaries and things. Not allowed. Anything that is impure, giving bad vibration, should not be. And even a, whatever you have, you should think, who can you do? So, it means you should have possessions to express your generosity. Sahaja Yogi has to be generous like the sea. A miserly Sahaja Yogi, I cannot think of that. It is like mixing of darkness with light. Miserliness is not allowed in there. Anybody whose mind goes, how much I can save money or save my labor? How? There are many labor saving devices also. And money saving devices. Or cheating others. Or making money out of certain things here and there. All such things are. Against them. They will pull you down. Enjoy your generosity. How many times I must have told you about generosity. I remember once I wanted to give a sari that I had from uh, abroad. You see, because in India people like that kind of a sari. No, I mean I don't understand why they like it. Nylon sort of thing. And a lady said that I haven't got any sari from outside and I would like to have an import of sari. And I have only one left because I am quite good at doing that. So I told one of my niece in laws, I said, I want to give away the sari to her. On a holy day, you can give it to elders, so I'll give it. I said, You have only one left now, why do you want to give away? You have given away all that to her. Now I feel like giving away. And we were discussing this in the kitchen. And I said, why do you tell me? I'm not going to take your advice on this point. And at that time, the bell rang. And a gentleman said, he had brought three saris for me from Africa. And one of them was exactly the same, the one I had. Because I had given some thin saris to this lady when she was going to Africa. She thought she should send me some saris, so she said. You are just Standing in the center, from one door is front and the other door is moon. Nice to see all that movement. Very interesting. Apart from that, the way you give it, the emotional side of it is so beautiful, you can't. 
I met a lady after two, fifty years of her marriage in London, suddenly, and she said, "Oh, what are you going to do? What? You see, I'm wearing the same pearl necklace you have given me on my wedding day today, and I should." And the whole thing, the whole drama thing. I mean, it was something. It is how you think, even a small thing. It's the greatest art of beauty. One has to learn. It. Give up the mundane type of thing. Like if you go to somebody's birthday, you send the card. Thank you very much. Make it a more deeper significant thing. Let us see how you develop your symbol of love. And then you'll have these things of vibration, and then you'll give it to a son to you. You know what? Never last in the law, especially among them. Gradually, they are learning how to small things win over, as if the vibrations flow through those things and work out for them. Then, for the Sahajogi, it is important. The new things, which are more natural in the self, you are part of the self. Be more natural. I don't say that you go and take out the roots and eat them or eat them in the fish. No, I don't mean that. When going too far with things, I always I must say you must avoid. But try to lead a life which is more natural. Natural, in the sense that people know that there is no vanity. Or some people can be other way round. They will dress up like a tram, just to attract more attention. I mean, they can be both ways. Then I find some of the people you see. Coloring their hair and all that. Who is that? Let them come. Huh? Over here. I didn't tell you. Oh, I see. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Put your attention here. How does it even work out? So you have to be natural, very natural. It can mean anything absurd also to some people who do not use their wisdom. Wisdom is very important in surgery. That one has to keep intact all the time. Natural means you must wear natural dresses, which are suitable. For example, in this climate, there is no need for you to wear dress like Rama used to wear. You would not wear anything on top. There is no need. You have to wear the dress, whatever country you are from. Whatever suits for the occasion, whatever you think is dignified and good, it speaks for your more elegance and your personality. Whatever suits you, you should wear. Not like all the people wearing that. Uh, Moss Brothers. Yes. 
in the green suit, horrible looking and absolutely making clowns out of them. No clownish things are necessary. No dandy stuff is necessary. Here so beautiful dresses should be worn which give you dignity. Actually in the East people believe that God has given you a beautiful body and it is to be adored with a beauty of what human beings have seen. Just to respect it, just to worship your body. For example, now in India, people wear, women wear their saris. The saris are expressive of their moods of this women, of uh, expression of their uh, worship of their body. Because you must respect it. Dresses should be such that you be for utility as well as dignity. There is no need to have uniform clothes for nature at all. See, I do not like there should be variety, acceptation. Every should one should be a different person. For a puja and all that you may wear something. Similar doesn't matter. Where your attention need not be on the variety, but outside you should be a normal person. You are all householders. Nobody uh, has to announce something. Even you people, I do not tell you that you put on your red mark while walking on the street. Because you should be like normal people, not to be pointed at. You need not be absurdly dressed or funny dressed in a normal way as others do. To be normal is very important. Then we have to know that Sahaja Yogis have to get over all kinds of discrimination and identification according to races, colors, or different religions in the world. Because you are born as a Christian, you do not belong to a church. You are not born in a church. Thank God. Otherwise, all the spirits there would capture you. But these identifications will linger on. To accept anything new, you have to be reborn, and you are reborn. Now you are dharma. Means you need not follow any particular type of religion. You are open to all the religions and all the essence of religion. You are not to denounce any religion any time. To insult any religion, or to insult any religious incarnation, any time. It's sin. It's sin. It's sin. It's sin. It's sin. It's sin. Anyone else? And you know who they are. There should be no racial understanding of one. You could have been a Chinese or you could have been a Negro. You could have been anything. As long as we are all human beings, we should know that we laugh the same way, we smile the same way, we hold the same way. This is all condition in our mind of this time. That you, some are untouchable, some are touchable. This is in our Indian community, all of us. Brahminism of India has ruined this. 
and you learn from them. For example, who was Vyasa? The one who wrote Gita. Who was he? He was the illegitimate son of a fisherwoman. That's why deliberately he was born like that. All these Brahmins who read Gita tell them who was Vyasa. Brahmins are those who are realized souls. And for realized souls, there is nothing like all these non-physical things. Like where are you born, in what caste and community are. With all education and everything in the West, you find this nonsense of racialism. I just can't understand. If somebody is fair or dark, after all, God has to make variety in color in every way. Who told you that you are the most handsome people here? Maybe for some of the markets here or maybe in the Hollywood, it may fit in, but in the kingdom of war. All these so-called handsome people look to be denied. Marrying seven husbands and all sorts of things. Then we all put in hell. The beauty is of the heart, not of the face. That shows and shines. I mean, people are little bit aware of it. That's why they go and stand their face. I don't know. They are quite aware that it is too much showing off here. But to have vanity, to have such absurd ideas, some people like red hair, some like black hair, some like this. I mean, there have to be different types of hair. Why do you like a particular type of hair? This I can't understand. There's nothing like life and this life. Whatever God has created, it is all beautiful. Who are you to judge whether I like this and I like that? I. Who is this I? Who likes? Is Mr. Ego? It is being pampered by this society. It teaches you how to smoke cigars and how to have your lager. Morning to you. All this training and all this conditioning has to be thrown away. Just like still. And see that God has created all of you. As his own children. It's such a beautiful thing. Why do you want to make it ugly with these ugly eyes? All this ugliness of I like and I dislike. I'll not say. Only there should be one word, I love. Okay? Yes. There's no need to remember what the British Indians and what Germans did to Jews. Okay? Those people who did anything are dead and finished. We are different people. We are different people. We are safe. This is for your statutes of food, which you have been by. But today, I authorize you to do the duty. So that through your own character and through your own personality, the way you practice the yoga in your own life and manifest the life, others will follow you. And that you will establish the statutes of law in their hearts, 
emancipate them, give them their salvation, because you have got your salvation. Раз. Омвамива сам. 
Krishna Mata ji for blessing us with this beautiful collective meditation Krishna Mata ji Let's bow down to Shri Mata ji and take bandhan <laughs> 